With the average house price in Auckland now skyrocketing to over $750,000 and rent just going through the roof, it's no surprise that young Aucklanders are looking for alternative living situations. Today we're meeting Lily Kemp, who's turned a pop-up caravan into an off-the-grid backyard haven. Hi Lily. Hiya. How's it going? Good, thanks. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. And here she is, the wonderful retro pop-up camper. Yes, yeah. I love it. What a cool style. Yeah, very retro with yeah. that canvas. And so you're just you're just parking here in the, the backyard at the moment? Like, how does that all work? Yep, yeah, so I'm actually paying a little bit of rent just to park it up in this nice big garden. Yeah. Um, yeah, just saving a bit on Auckland rent, but also getting to live in my home, which is a caravan. Because of course where we are right now, this is actually very close to town, isn't it? Mm, yes. So yeah. rent prices in this area are quite high. Oh yes, I'm paying probably about a quarter of what my flatmates who are inside the house are paying. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't really see, I only see benefits for living outside, but a quarter of the price of renting, you know, you can't really lose with that. Absolutely. Mm. Well, let's go have a look inside. I'm really keen Sweet. to see her. <laughs> so here she is. What a cute space. This is awesome. I saw it as a, a way to move my house with me. You know, not have to miss out on going to different places or um, coming up north to visit family and then going back down south for work and the major thing with it that I really love is the fact that it's a pop top. The fact that I can fold it down, attach it to the back of my not so strong car and just kind of take it, drag it behind me anywhere. As a renter and as somebody who can't imagine owning a house for quite a long time, um, it was just really disappointing to never be able to, I don't know, gossip about wallpapers or floor coverings or something. So I just really loved that I could have something that's totally mine and if I make mistakes with it or don't like it I can just do it again um, but not having to leave it at the end of a tenancy I think that's a big thing for me. So the grand tour what have we got here? <laughs> cool so I guess the main well the first thing we did when we got it um, me and my friend Felix who I did most of the work with uh, we had to replace the floor Yep. Um, it was just totally rotten through. Um, of course, that hadn't been mentioned in the Trade Me ad, but that was fine. Um, yeah. So the whole thing had to be replaced. And then Lino, which we then sort of semi-matched on the wings. Cool. And, I mean, you've got absolutely everything here that you need. Eh? I mean, a sleeping area, galley kitchen, fridge, gas stove. Yeah, my little makeup station as well, because yep. I am still a young female um, and... My boxes, which I tend to think of as my more everyday clothes. Yeah. Um, otherwise, everything is just packed underneath the bed, the sofa, all underneath here as well. Yeah. Mm, just making the most of all that space. So kind of once a week, I'll kind of pack everything back away, have a bit of a tidy up, and then maybe chuck some clothes in there that I think I might use for the next week, or just something so I don't have to kind of tear all the cushions up and things and unload and every single time I want to get dressed or get changed. Because I suppose living in a space this size, that's something you have to be really conscious of, eh? Always staying on top of the cleaning work and tidying. Yes, yeah. Um, for me, I've always been a very untidy person and strangely, I think being in such a small space has actually made me a lot tidier just yeah. because you need to. And also to keep it looking its best, to keep it looking homely and comfortable I think it really does need kind of a little bit more upkeep than a bedroom. The very first place I ever lived you know away from my family um, was probably the biggest and I've probably just gone smaller and smaller and smaller since then so I was sort of used to it I mean things for me things like clothes not being able to have a full wardrobe that's maybe something um, that I find a little frustrating but the rest has been surprisingly easy. So design's obviously a really important thing for you. Tell me a little bit about how you've made the space your own and some of the things that you've done. I guess for me, the floor was a big thing because it wasn't just 
sort of aesthetic. It was it really needed to be done. It was totally rotten through. And I, I guess when I looked down at it once I'd bought it, actually the first I noticed of it not being okay was that I stood on it and I noticed all this water coming out from underneath the lino and I thought, I don't know if wood's supposed to do that. So I ended up pulling it all back and I was just, yeah, really scared by it, which I think made me end up loving it so much and end up spending a little bit more money on sort of the lino than I would otherwise, just because I was thinking, I've done this from scratch, I might as well make it exactly what I want it to be. Bunting, of course, because I just think every caravan has to have bunting. The plants as well, I think just, I don't know, just make it feel a little bit more like a place where someone lives rather than kind of somewhere that someone's in between on holidays or something like that. But otherwise it's just the girly things. It's the wallpaper, it's the mint green paint, you know? It's just having a place where there's no one to sort of say, there's just no compromise. It's just everything I want. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to the galley and everything, I mean, how do you how do you find that? Is it a functional kitchen when it comes to cooking and that sort of thing? How does that all work? It here? definitely is in terms of, obviously you're not gonna be cooking for a huge family in here, um, but in terms of making yourself something nice to eat while being kind of up and down from reading your book, it's just perfect. I mean, I've got a full kitchen inside that I just never use because for one person, I find that this is totally enough. Functional fridge, a stove that I can make a cup of tea or I can make a little meal for myself. I just feel like it's kind of all I need. I'd say at this point, there is no way that I could rent in Auckland or there's, I see what people are kind of struggling for, for the really bottom of the barrel flats. And I just kind of think it's time to start being a little bit creative with it because the setup I have here, I personally think, is better than the flatmates in the house who will be paying four times as much. And I just think that what you're getting for your money in Auckland isn't enough either, you know, in terms of how hard of a city it is to live in, how hard it is to get around. Um, so to pay so much money to just live, to try and live as close as possible to Auckland I mean, I said I'd never come back because of housing prices and because I just did not think that living in Auckland was worth the money. Um, but paying $50 to live in someone's garden in Auckland, it's an amazing city. <laughs> so, I mean, I do think it's time to start thinking creatively or else, you know, young people or maybe people who aren't in as comfortable economic positions are going to start getting, you know, pushed down to Hamilton or Huntley or something like that. There's not going to be a place for them in Auckland as we are now anyway. What about under here? Have you got storage under this area? Yes, so that's um, pretty much total storage actually. There's slide cupboards at the front um, which are really, they're really good because they're quite shallow but they're really accessible whereas some of the other storage um, which is probably the bulk of it is all under the seats so it's a case right. of actually taking off the cushions having a bit of a route around in there. Um, so that's sort of where you store everything that you don't necessarily need to access every day. Every day, and, yeah. And you've even got a solar panel over there. Yes. So what's that powering at the moment? Cool, so that actually charges my power bank, which um, kind of charges everything in here. Um, it just, it takes maybe a good full day to charge totally. Um, but once it's charged, it tends to last me sort of at least half a week and that's yeah takes care of the radio the fan charging my phone of course but most importantly at the moment is the lights right wow and so how much did your whole solar setup cost cool so that was actually such a bargain that one was 61 dollars off trade me you're joking no so there that type is quite a lot more than that usually but I went for the one dollar reserve and just kind of watched it like a hawk and <laughs> yeah and ended up getting a really good deal on that which I've been totally happy with really happy wow. so mm. a 60 dollar pv set up and you can throw away your power bill yeah totally wow. because you know I trying to persuade the flatmates as well um on how little I use you know they found it really hard to believe that you know but you'll be coming in and charging your phone or doing this or you know it's 
it gets a little bit stuffy in here, what about having a fan or something like that? It took quite a lot to persuade them, you know, that this one little solar panel can take care of that. And for me, personally, it just, yeah, takes care of everything. So it kind of makes you realise how crazy electricity prices are. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's incredible. I mean, it amazes me, actually, that such a small panel can take care of all of those, mm. all of those elements. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. And so then you've just got gas on top of that because I'm just saying it's a gas fridge and stove? Yes, yeah, so this is gas and electricity. So mm -hmm. you can choose either or if you're plugged up to mains, um, which I was originally supposed to do, but just never needed to. Yep. Um, so generally with these two, I'm running them on gas. Yep. The fridge is fantastic, I guess, because it's built in a way that it's not going to be on all the time. Sure. So it just keeps... Yeah, keeps all of its sort of coldness for a long, long, long time. Mm. And what would your response be to someone that said that living in a pop-up camper was like homelessness? I, I, it's quite funny. I get that a little bit. I get, um, oh, where are you living? Oh, I live, I'm, I'm always the first to go. I'm living in a caravan in somebody's garden. And it's really funny. Sometimes you get someone who will say, oh, wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's so cool. What are you, you know, what's the situation like? And then you get the other half of the people who go, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you live in a caravan. And you go, it's actually by choice. And I actually really, really love it. I think for a young single person, it's absolutely perfect. And there's, you know, I bring people here and there's no shame. <laughs> I love showing them around it and showing them what I've done. So, so you've got your bed over here as well. Yeah. And you said this also pops up and transforms into a living area? Yes, so basically the two cushions, in it's made up of four um, squabs, so the two in the middle pop up, um, you know, turn into sort of two little sofas, and the base of the middle section rises up, so it's also, also a table. Um, so really nice for if I do have friends over, because I think my friends all love the novelty of it a little bit um, but otherwise I tend just to have it down just because I'm a bit lazy. I thought hey cheap rent let's take the summer off so I pretty much just go to the beach, go for a swim, come back here for probably a midday nap if it's too hot, um, go ride my bike around a bit um, but I don't know I guess when I'm in here I'm either listening to music or I'm reading or I'm just kind of relaxing. I try, I mean, I've got, you know, um, a portable DVD player and stuff like that, but I haven't actually used them yet. I try to just, when I'm in here, just totally relax, kind of unplug a bit as well. Mm. So the camper was originally $1,000 um, based on its very rough condition. It was from Trade Me, um, but I'd seen another pop top going for sort of 3,000 and I thought if I can do this one up for less than that and it'll be everything I want it to be Then I'll be really happy with that. The only thing is of course is that I ran out of money before replacing the canvas which would be perfect especially if I want to try and last a winter in it mm. So what advice would you have for other people who are in your situation that are looking to escape the rent trap? What, what would you say to them? I guess just keep your options open. Don't necessarily say no to something just because of maybe what you've thought about those kind of people before um, in terms of caravan living. You know, it's um, just such an awesome way to have your own space but be totally independent. Um, I guess the big thing for me, what's really helped me is just to be, you know, to just give it a go to say I'm not, I don't know, a carpenter, I'm not, you know, a builder in this sense, and just to kind of buy it and say, oh, if it goes wrong, who cares, let's do, let's do it again. Or we'll find somebody who will say, oh, I kind of know a little bit about that, let me give you a hand. You know, things seem to work out, so I guess it's just taking that first step and committing yourself to some sort of vessel that you can transform. Well, I think that you have built a wonderful place here that you can be really proud of. Thank you so much for showing oh, me around. You're very, very welcome. When I think of some of the times I've been most happy in life, it's often actually been while I was camping. There really is something about the simplicity of camping that just connects us to, well, a simpler way of life. 
especially in today's really hectic modern society. I think that's often something that we really strive to recreate. There's no question about it, Lily has created a magical little haven here in this little backyard. I think that we could learn a lot from her.